PC, accounting for your future. Hi, this is Steve from APC, and I'm the course director here at APC. So in this video, we're going to talk to you about the SIMA CO2, the fundamentals of financial accounting. So how it will be tested in the SIMA CO2 exam. So the first part of this video is where we're going to introduce to you the latest syllabus by the SIMA. Uh, we've got the A, B, C and D in the SIMA CO2 exams. So, I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce to you what do I mean by financial accounting. So financial accounting is all about the external accounting. So we're going to prepare the financial statements published by the company. So for example, quite a lot of these listed companies, you can uh, go to their websites, for example, the Apple POC, the Microsoft, you can go to the website and download the financial statements published by their companies, including how much assets they've got. For example, they've got non current asset, receivable, inventory and how much debts they've borrowed uh, for example from the bank or issue some government bonds uh, sorry issue some bonds corporate bonds etc so of course you can download those from those websites but what do I mean by financial accounting so if you are the investor you've got loads of cash within your pocket but that cash was subject to time value of money this means that as time goes by the value of the money goes down so in order to solve this issue or tackle this problem, what you need to do is that you're going to spend your money away to invest in some of the companies, buying their shares, for example. So before you buy that shares, you have to look at their financial statements, whether or not this company operation is good or bad. So from the accountant's perspective, you are going to prepare that financial statement. So what we tend to do in the SIMA CO2 is where we're going to introduce to you the basic steps of how to prepare the financial statements. For example, we've got the invoices if you're going to uh, sell something to a customer. And we're going to, based upon that invoice, to recognise the sales revenue. But how are we going to do those transactions? Because uh, from a business point of view, we've got thousands of transactions daily, maybe, for a large business. So if that is the case, how are we going to record those transactions first before we post that onto the final financial statement? That's where we're going to be focusing on. So that as you can see in the section C of our syllabus, you're going to prepare the account for the single companies. So the account, which means the financial statement, showing how much profits that you've made, uh, assets was the liability and the equity the company has, of course, we are going to go through that into the section C. Also within the section D, it's talked about the controlling the accounting system. What does that actually mean is, if we find some of the errors, mistakes in our account, how are we going to deal with that? We have to make sure from the director's perspective within the company that all of his financial statements figures are absolutely correct. Because we will never lie to our shareholders, although we tend to lie to our shareholders quite a lot in the real life. But from the ethical perspective, uh, from a professional accountant's perspective, we should never do that. But how are we going to control the accounting systems then? Of course, we're going to see quite a lot of these techniques telling us how to do that later on. Also, we're going to look at quite a few accounting standards related to inventory, related to property plant equipment. How are we going to account for it? as well in the section B. And finally, we're going to look at some of the conceptual framework as well. So what do I mean by regulatory as well as the conceptual framework is that uh, I don't know where you are, uh, you are from. So maybe you're from China, you're from Canada. So of course, when you are preparing your account in those jurisdictions, or you can call it as the countries, of course, uh, you are going to follow the regulatory framework in that particular country. For example, the Companies Act in the uh, in China, the Companies Act in Canada, the Companies Act in uh, uh, Singapore, for example. But uh, from the practical perspective, uh, the accounting standards in those countries nowadays uh, are tend to be very, very similar to the international financial reporting standards, which is the IFRS. So that we are studying the IFRS in the SIMA CO2, but when preparing the account, you have to make sure that which country you are in, so that you can uh, understand is uh, framework in those uh, uh, countries. Also, you're going to talk about the conceptual framework as well. 
I mean, the accounting uh, is just to be an art. So, I, I mean, for example, for depreciation expenses related to machinery, you can either put it into the cost of sales or you can put it into the administration expenses. It's entirely up to you. So uh, you have to look at your business environment. You have to business your. You have to look at your industry nature, so you can decide where to put those items onto the financial statement. So, uh, by whatever you want, uh, the conceptual framework just talks about. You can do everything you like uh, if you are fulfilling the requirements in the framework. So of course we're going to detail that when we come to it. Okay, so that's what the SIMA CO2 is all about. And the next part of this video is we're going to look at how the SIMA CO2 may be assessed by your examiner. You're given two hours, uh, is sitting in front of your computer, and you're given 50 compulsory questions as well, and each of them were worth two marks. And the passing mark for the SIMA CO2 is to be 50 marks. Which means that if you, uh, I mean, if you only have got 48 marks, of course you will fail the exam. If you've got 52 or maybe 70, of course you can pass this exam. So that's what the SIMA CO2 is all about. And all of these questions are uh, computer-based questions, are objective test questions, in other words. Of course, includes the multiple choice questions where you're given A, B, C and D and you're going to choose uh, a or B or C or D uh, from those four options or you're going to choose two out of four as well. It's entirely up to your computer. Also, you're given some of the drop down uh, questions as well. You're given some of the yes and no type of question. You're given some of the numbers inches questions, etc. Of course, uh, those will be uh, detailed in our due course. The third part of this video is we're going to look at how APC can help in order to help with your exams in the SIMA CO2, we will provide you with all of those HD quality videos going through the whole syllabus and together with our expert videos telling you our exam uh, I mean techniques, uh, strategies, etc. Of course, you can rely on our resources to help with your exams in the SIMA CO2 together with our printable study notes. Uh, within the printable study notes, not only are you going to go through those knowledge, but also there will be lots of exercises in there. Uh, you don't have to uh, buy extra study tests as well as the revision kit from the outside market, but you can rely on our study materials to pass this exam. If you've got any questions, problems during your study, email our tutor so that we will provide you, provide you with the answers uh, as well because we uh, have provided the tutor support. And finally, we've got the pass guarantee service. This means that if you fail the exam, don't worry, you can enroll in the course again free of charge until you pass it. Because we are sure that with our material, you will pass the SIMA CO2 relatively easily. So, happy studying and looking forward to seeing you in the actual class. APC Accounting for your future